<laughs> so afternoon session. And our first speaker of this afternoon is Takashi Gojobori from the National Institute of Genetics Research Organization of Japan. And Takashi is, of course, world known from being the founder and uh, director of DDBG, the international uh, DNA database bank of Japan, which is, I mean, the Japanese representative of the triad of the nucleotide sequence database, EMBL, Gen Bank, and DDBG. And what people see, everyone knows, because everyone knows DDBG, but what probably people don't know is that Takashi is a specialist of molecular evolution. He has worked on virus, on the MHC complex. If I remember correctly, he worked a lot at one point on immigration of population using MHC typing. So he has done a lot of work on molecular evolution before being part of the DDBG group. And he is involved in a lot of genome and transcriptome projects in Japan. I put as geolink for you Kyushu, Houston, and Mishima, and as Baolinks, uh, Masato Shine, with whom you did, I think, all your phylogeny work in uh, Houston, your postdoc, if I remember correctly, and Kazuzo Ikeo and Yoshio Tateno, which a lot of people know here. And I have one anecdote on Takashi, is that some of you, oops, that's not the right, I got a small problem, so is that the right <laughs> Well, I will tell it with its, uh, the file, in fact. I don't need the, the file. Uh, let's close it. I mean, some of you know, I've heard of Kobe beef. Kobe beef is supposed to be the best beef in the world. Those animals are really pampered. What people do is that they basically give them every day, I think, beer, and the cattle is massaged so that the meat is really tender. And Takashi is very well known to tell to, to all his friends that he would love to be a Kobe beef. <laughs> so welcome, Takashi. Uh, thanks so much, Amos, for a wonderful introduction. Actually, I wish I could be a, a Kobe beef. Uh, today, I would like to talk on uh, a long shot of a human protein world in genome network. In particular, I would like to focus on uh, uh, the evolutionary process of human nervous system specific uh, genes. But first of all, I would like to really congratulate the organizers, SwissProt, Uniprot, and SIB people, mostly my friends, on this 20th anniversary of SwissProt. Very really congratulations. Also, it is my great honor to be invited to this wonderful meeting. As Amos kindly introduced to you, uh, we are working on DDBJ. DNA Data Bank of Japan. We are collaborating on nucleotide sequence data collection and the distribution in collaboration with EBI, EMBL, and GenBank at NCBI. Maybe just let me briefly describe what we have done uh, quite recently. We contributed a lot to, to some extent, to a human genome draft uh, sequencing efforts. And also, we initi initiated a functional annotation on mouse cDNA uh, with RECAN. And also, we worked on chromosome bonding annotation, in particular, in silico um, algorithm, give you kind of a nice prediction with chromosomal bonding. We also worked on rice genome project. In particular, first we sequenced uh, chromosome number one uh, uh, with uh, Japanese National Agricultural Institute. Also, international efforts was on uh, 
uh, whole genome uh, sequen sequencing. And collaboration with Riken on the mouth full range cDNA annotation has been extended uh, to, to the third. Actually, the number of full range cDNA of mouse has been accumulated to more than 60,000 clones now. One of the hallmark, particularly for international collaboration, hosted by DDBJ and JBAC, that is Tokyo Center. And this is a human full length CDA DNA annotation. We call H invitational. Actually, uh, 118 people from 40 different uh, well-known international organize, internationally organizations gathered to Tokyo, spent almost 10 days to make full annotation on uh, human flu length cDNAs. In particular, as you know, even if you, we know whole genome sequence data, still it is crucial to have some experimental validation where and uh, which uh, the, the human genes are located. And in collaboration with NIH Mammalian Gene Collection, German Cancer Center, and the Shanghai uh, Genome Center, the Japanese uh, colleagues from Tokyo University and the Kazusa DNA Institute and the previous Helix Institute, Institute contributed almost all high throughput uh, cDNA uh, clone efforts. And in particular, uh, we created the database called H-Angel, Human Anatomical Gene Expression Library, which has 60 different human tissues. If you categorize those into 10 greater categories, such as neural blood, uh, dermal connective, others, then also you can see which gene are uh, which uh, tissue specific, if you tentatively define the gene uh, which can be expressed more than 50% uh, in a given tissue or over among others. And here, uh, six different platforms are uh, documented, including Affymetrix chip. Uh, this is kind of an interesting picture. This is if you allow us to define uh, uh, tissue specific genes, as I said, those 10 uh, different uh, large category, greater category of genes are mapped over the genome. Certainly from here, you might discuss where the, the aggregation of genes which are specifically express particular tissues. But anyway, let me leave this uh, issue maybe another time. And uh, this has been well uh, covered by international press, including Science Magazine. Also, we worked on uh, comparative genomics. In particular, we made pairwise comparison, more than 200 prokary prokaryotic complete genome sequence data by utilizing so-called grid computing technologies. We identified possible genes which has been horizontally transferred. And also, we can make uh, five prime non-coding regions between human and mass, particularly focusing on uh, possible cis elements over uh, complete genome. But here, the main issue is much more focus on uh, brain and uh, central nervous system. So as we know, Descartes uh, said, we think I am. Therefore, it might be one of the central issue uh, how we think we are. But uh, that is a tough question philosophically or uh, scientifically. But uh, you can um, make it break down into two important um, practical issues, namely 
One is to understand the function and the structure of a brain at the molecular level, possibly. The second would be to understand an evolutionary origin and the process of brain. But uh, it is so obvious to, to work on uh, human, even uh, mouse. Uh, therefore, first we'd like to overview the whole uh, evolutionary process that has been recorded so far. Uh, here, the species whose complete genomes are currently available. Now, like a neuron has been created in a hydra, and the C. elegans and the cockroaches might have a ganglion. Then uh, when it goes to a uh, acidian tunicate, then a uh, neural tube has been developed. Then uh, when it becomes a fish, this is a shark, shark brain. There is a cerebrum and cerebrum. Sorry for Japanese accent, there is no <laughs> distinction. <laughs> but uh, then uh, you go to uh, uh, birds, penguin, then uh, brain stems, cerebrum, cere cerebrum. Then uh, it goes to mouse, apparently developed cerebra cerebrum. Then obviously this is uh, human. Uh, but I'd like you to know, note those colder color shows very old time, and the dark color shows recent time. Maybe you can divide. Uh, the time over A, B, C, until H to eight evolutionary time stages. So, since we know the work on the human and the mouse are so difficult, first we focus on the planarian. Planarian is known to have the most primitive brain, just like here. Therefore, a central nervous system has been created evolutionally around the divergence time between the planarian and the others. Here is Kodata, we, we are here. Also, uh, we'd like to notice that uh, this is Nidarian, which does not have any apparent system which has dispersed neural cells, but still they can have coordinated motions or uh, catch the, the bait. So first we focus on uh, planarian. Here is a planarian, and it, it has a two eyeballs and its brain. It has an optic chiasma such as a human brain, even though whole body length is only 2.5 centimeters, one inch long. And we cut off the head for over 500 planarian individuals and the sequence for ESTs. Then uh, we sequenced around uh, 25,000 clones, then uh, searched over the database, including Swissplot and the Interpros made annotations. We found 116 clones could be related to uh, apparently the neural system. When we made a comparison with uh, other complete genome sequence data, we found like 95% uh, of 116 planarian brain clones has been conserved with a human. Uh, and when we compared other organisms, such as C. elegans, Drosophila, the conservation is extremely high. Even for fungi and uh, Arabidopsis, there is 35% to 40%. Therefore, we have to conclude that at least those genes which can potentially create planarian brain has existed much longer before, even uh, before the divergence between uh, protostomia and uh, 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 the others. Deuterostomes. Thanks so much. Uh, then uh, we separated head part and the body part. Then uh, we worked on uh, uh, microRNAs. Then we found 205 
uh, specific clones which are expressed in uh, planarian head. In collaboration with uh, Rick and uh, Dr. Agata's team, we made whole mount in situ hybridization. Then, as I expected, we found a lot of different gene expression pattern over planarian brain. When we summarize these patterns, uh, it looks that there are seven different regions. Therefore, I would say that the functional regionalization of planarian brain has been already uh, created. When we knocked out the most strongest signal, this one, this is clone 721. When we knocked out this gene by RNAi, they, we found that uh, uh, so many eyes appeared and uh, the whole body becomes brain. We named it uh, no dalake in Japanese, full of brain. And uh, it found to be F, FD, uh, uh, the, 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 the differentiation factor for, for uh, brain tissue. So we went to a Nidarian. Since it's very much interesting, only neural cells, this dispersed neural cells of Hydra, there is no apparent uh, you know, uh, nervous system yet. So again, uh, we sequenced about uh, uh, 24,000 clones for ESTs. Then we found uh, about 6,500 non-redundant clones. But it was a big issue how we can isolate cDNAs from neural cells specifically. But it was lucky that there is a mutant which called epithelial hydra. This mutant lacks completely neural cells as well as nematocyte, which is related to neural cells. So we decided to conduct the cDNA microarray analysis if you have a competitive uh, hybridization between uh, epi epithelial hydra, which lacks neural cells and uh, normal hydra, like here, there is no spot for uh, sorry spot for normal hydra, but no spot for epithelial hydra. This could be a good candidate for genes specifically expressed in the neural cells in hydra. Unfortunately, more than uh, uh, about 56% of genes has been no match with any database. However, uh, remaining 44% uh, of genes can be uh, annotated uh, some way. But when uh, we made uh, insight hybridization, apparently those genes are expressed specifically in nematocyte and the neural cells, and uh, such as uh, like a tentacles, which might have certain system even though neural cells are distributed over body. So next question is how we can go into the human. In particular, the purpose is elucidate evolutionary process of nervous system. Uh, we focused on uh, emergence time of human genes specifically expressed in uh, brain or nervous system. And uh, when those genes emerged evolutionarily, and uh, what kind of genes they are? These are two questions. So we utilized H Invitational, the latest release 3.6. The data freeze date is uh, May 7th of 2006, this year. And we have now 35 loci gene clusters now. Then uh, documented uh, uh, genes, uh, which has been uh, uh, recorded as gene expression data. That is 11,943. Then, as I said, we defined tentatively specific gene as a gene whose expression amount is more than 50% of a given tissue. 
Then a tissue specific gene has been documented as 1,479 genes. Among those that we identify operationally, uh, nervous system specific gene as 389 genes. Therefore, we focus on uh, about this 400 genes, 389 genes in human. So question is, when we look at the evolutionary process from human 389 nervous system specific genes, how homologous genes emerged over evolutionary process? So as you remember, we divided uh, uh, evolutionary time A, B, C, D, E, F, G, maybe H. So those are complete uh, genome sequences sequence data are available. Therefore, we can check whole genome. In the case of neurogenic differential factor two, if you check those species do not have this homologue, however, fish and rodent human has. So we tentatively identify this gene could be, uh, could appear at this period because you know, this is the most parsimonious way to understand. So in this way, we can map evolutionary time for all 389 human nervous system specific genes. Most interestingly, 29% of those genes emerge just before fish, bony fish. Therefore, uh, here really, the, when uh, uh, vertebrate appeared, somehow brain, uh, human brain specific genes might have emerged quite a lot. When we compared non, non, uh, nervous system specific genes, there is no such features, you know. When we discuss the rate of evolutionary appearance of those genes, namely how many genes per one million year, then apparently, as I said, that uh, uh, just before ev emergence of fish, 1.13, which is almost 10 times higher than uh, period of B. Therefore, a much more evolutionary uh, epoch-making events must have occurred just before emergence of vertebrate uh, regarding the human brain specific genes. So here is this uh, note, uh, annotation due to a GO, gene ontologies. Then uh, following time goes, what kind of genes appeared, such as here, first this time, and next time, like a channel for class transporter activities, and the receptor activity genes are so high. So you can see this way. So from here, what we concluded is somehow genes which are related to uh, new neurotransmitters and the channel power transporter emerged all period of time. However, the genes related to receptor emerged quite early, periods B and E. Therefore, we are really focusing on uh, protein possibly encoding the genes. Therefore, even though we don't know detailed network of those, particularly they must have an interaction, protein to protein interaction, protein to DNA interaction, still we can see kind of a long shot from this kind of analysis. So the conclusion to the first question, particularly when did the human nervous system specific gene emerged, and uh, it looks that uh, just before vertebrates emergence, particularly one third of genes has emerged among uh, about 400 genes that we examined. Therefore, uh, uh, we say that uh, the, the gene evolution is quite dynamic. Also, what kind of genes they are? 
This would be uh, an increase of receptor related gene had facilitated the evolution of the nervous system during periods B and E, new, uh, namely neurons and their network formation. So apparently network formation could be crucial for uh, evolutionary formation of those brain. brain. Therefore, uh, to understand this kind of things, we are now trying to construct 3D visualized database of the brain. Particularly, what we like to do is to make a bridge between gene protein world and the phenotypic features. Sorry, the misspelled here. So this is computer graphics. This is not only um, interface. This is a database. Here we can separate into parts. For a given parts, you can check into gene expression, gene proteins, proteomes, if network is available, that's fine too. Also, phenotypic uh, data such as MRI, CT, those images can be installed. Then this is mouse brain. So eventually what you can do is by utilizing 3D visualized database, you can uh, check what kind of genes are expressed in uh, particular tissue of mouse brain. You can go into the human quickly, then you might make a kind of a analysis to establish, to, to test, test what you like to do. Particularly model construction uh, can, be, uh, can be done by utilizing this one. So what we'd like to, I'd like to emphasize is really it is so much useful for make a database for making bridge between different levels of biological hierarchy. Okay, this is uh, acknowledgement. Thank you so much for your attention. So, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Just wait for the microphone, please. This is a, a, a talk is just fascinating, but I'm curious, in addition to the functional differences you saw, did you see anything else that characterized these nervous system proteins in the brain that are different than proteins in general? in terms of amino acid composition or anything else that might be different? I think that is a very important question. And uh, we have looked the the domains and the combination of domains were given the proteins. Unfortunately, we cannot find the obvious difference. Maybe we are not expert. Other questions? You mentioned that the receptors were the genes that uh, emerged. And how about then the inside molecules that would uh, link the receptor that would be the changes in the environment? And then the answer of the cell or the organism to this environment. So also it is an interesting question. If we can have a capability, look, look about uh, given tissue over developmental stage, certainly we can make an uh, answer. So we are planning to do so in a functional annotation of the mouse. However, obviously, for human, it's impossible. But in this analysis, we are looking at the larger scale of time, like a million years. Therefore, this difference could be very much small. But when we'd like to understand whole, certainly, environmental factor should be uh, checked. Particularly, first, we are uh, isolating RNAs as EST. Therefore, certain changes might have taken place. So it should be taken. Okay, is there one more question? Well, it seems not to be the case, so let's thank... Uh, thank you.